Welcome to the Sailing Center. I'm Paul Coward. Sailing is many things to many people. Thinking of sailing brings to mind exotic locales and expensive boats, the America's Cup, and the playthings of the rich and famous. It's also a healthy, nonviolent, and exciting sport for kids of all ages. People from all over the world participate in sailing activities of all kinds. It's fun and entertaining, but for the disabled, it can be a life-expanding therapy that opens new horizons available nowhere else. It can be important, inspiring, and life-affirming. In this program, we travel to Florida and Australia, capturing the activities of people overcoming their circumstances and enjoying life. Until recently, I thought of sailing as a wholesome sport that, while being healthy and exciting, wasn't terribly significant in the grand scheme of things. That was until I became involved with sailing for the disabled. Here, sailing becomes not only fun, but also important. Today, we're at Clearwater Beach in Florida. Right behind me, you can see they're setting up for the Access Dinghy North Americans. Access Dinghy is the epitome of sailing is for everybody. It's a great boat. It's made for community sailing, and as you can see, disabled sailing. They have a variety of ways of getting people in and out of the boats. It's sailed very simply, and we're going to watch the race. One of the first parts that's difficult is getting the people into the boat. People have different levels of disabilities that are racing in this race. A regatta like this can race people that are totally disabled. There's some people here that are going to be racing using just a joystick. They have no use of arms or legs. And then there's uh, able-bodied people that will be racing against them. The beauty of a boat like this is that once you're in the boat, everyone is equal. There's a handicap system so that you actually have a different rating depending on your disability. So that there are some compensations made. But as you can see, they're strapping the men in, and he has use of his arms, so he can steer in a conventional way for this boat, which is unconventional for most boats. What is so exciting or interesting about sailing for me is that when I'm racing, I'm not thinking about the rest of my life. I'm just thinking about the sail, the wind going over the sail, the, uh, the guy that's ahead of me, and how I'm going to catch him. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cleansing experience. What's your name? My name's Debbie Frankel. And and what's your function here? I see you directing traffic. I am uh, second in command at this regatta. Uh huh. And I am the Secretary of Sailability USA, which we incorporated back in February, which is promoting and supporting uh, community sailing sailing programs that are fully integrated nationwide and and in Canada. We primarily um, promote the access dinghies because they're easy boats for all for us to get people in and out of, mm -hmm. and they put everybody on an equal playing field. So you were saying that the access dinghy was uh, uh, good because it would accommodate all kinds of disabilities. Is and abilities. And abilities. Yeah. So you don't just sail these with strictly disabled people. It's also a community access kind of uh, sailboat? Absolutely. In fact, that's what we're all about is integrating everyone. All ages, all sizes, all economics, and all abilities. So I, I know we had spoken earlier, and you're, one of your other focuses besides the, the sailability is, is community sailing. Absolutely. And, and you think that, that being able to have people from the community, uh, able-bodied and, and disabled people, is an, ad, an advantage for both? Absolutely. I think everybody learns about one another and about, uh, about the fact that we're all not so different. And uh, it just puts everybody on an e even playing field. So, and not only that, but when you have a community sailing program that's like this, because the disabled people need some help, people learn to count on one another. And they all work, learn to work together. And it becomes just a, a real giving kind of program, which is really nice. It is. Yeah. It, it, sailing has so traditionally been centered on yacht clubs, and a lot of people think of it as, as a really high-end activity. But 
it can be pretty affordable for uh, when, you, when you're looking on at this level, isn't it? Absolutely. That's why we, we tend to use these boats, and they were designed so that they would be affordable and be able to be um, gotten a fleet within a community without raising hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're hoisting her. They've already um, put her portable ventilator in the boat. So and she has to have some sort of breathing apparatus to sail at all. Yes, but all the time that, that she's um, without the ventilator, they need to hand pump her so that she can continue breathing. Oh, I while see. While they um, transfer her into the boat, and they'll reconnect her ventilator once she's in the boat. And then, and then they put her on this davit, and then they just swing her right into there. Unlike the other sailors who just get swung over in a sling, right. she's in a special chair that's just like her chair, so that um, they put her in this, and then the entire chair goes over into the boat. Now, wh how did she get involved in sailing, do you know? I mean, did she... Yeah, did, Was she injured to, get, to have this disability, or was it... Was she born with it? No. Yeah. Nava, uh, at age four, was hit by a car. She was in the street and was hit by a car and was left paralyzed from pretty much right below her neck down. So how did she get involved in sailing? Do you have any idea? I do. Um, she uh, met a young lady, Amy, in Australia who has no arms and only one leg with three toes. And Amy swims and sails with her toes and plays the trumpet. And Nava was staying at the resort where Amy lives. And um, Amy's father said to Nava, you know, we could get you in a boat. And, we, and she was all for it. Yeah, that'd be great. And so that's how it all began. Boy, she has to have a lot of nerve. She, she's very courageous and extremely competitive. Oh, really? Yeah, very competitive. She's determined that she's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's quite a young lady. Now, what is she, how is she able to steer? She has a joystick, just like she moves her wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, there's a joystick that is the exact same kind of controls. It's a, like a round knob. And what it will do is when she wants to bring in the sail, she pulls it forward towards her when she wants to let the sail out, she let she pushes the knob forward. Okay. When she wants to go right, it's right, and when she wants to go left, it's left. Um, she's she's putting on the the steering apparatus here. That's right. Um, and it, that little suction cup looking thing is she just puts her chin in that and then moves it around. That's her joystick, and she, you'll see when she starts moving it. She really doesn't even put her chin inside it. Uh huh. She actually moves it from the edge of it, and you can see. She has a strobe light on the back of right. her chair, so that um, if she needs something, all she does is press a button on her on the side of her joystick. Oh, I see the red button there. Mm -hmm. And then if the strobe light goes off, they'll come over to her right away. Oh, that's fantastic. So the, the boats don't turn over, and she has all these safety devices. So she's really she's really set. Yeah, she is. So, uh, she she communicates to Chris through the radio. Uh huh. He can coach her through the radio, and of course, if she needs anything or she wants to ask one of her nurses something, she can do that all through the radio. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. We have blind sailors, and we do the same thing. We put a microphone and headpiece on the blind sailors, and then their coaches stay on the dock, and they steer them from the dock. Oh my goodness. You're never going to get to play golf with with Tiger Woods. You could be standing right next to him, and he ain't playing golf with you. But you could actually sail against Dennis Conner or Paul Kayard or Gary Jobson, because it's a it's a it's a sport that that everyone participates in. 